good? We're back in this thing. Today, we're gonna be going over how to edit 360 footage in Premiere Pro or After Effects. I'm gonna be showing you all the tips and tricks that I know on how to do that. If you're looking for some 360 footage and you don't have your own, you can go ahead and check out my video editing contest right now that I have going on. It has some 360 footage free to use and free to enter. So go ahead and check out that video if you're interested in that. But yeah, if you're new here, I do music video tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I upload three times a week and we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. One last thing before we get into the video, if you want to level up your music video editing game, you can check out my website, briandelmata.com. I'll have it linked down below as well as a tutorial playlist on all my packs and presets. It's a good way to support the channel and also get some really cool looks for yourself. But yeah, that's enough talking for right now. Let's get into the video and break down how to edit this 360 footage. All right, so now that we're on the computer, depending on what stage you are in editing your 360 footage, you might have some video files that look like this or whatever video camera you shot on. I shot on the Insta360 1R, so it has Insta360 video types. But if you shot on some other 360 camera, you'll probably have some other different video types. And if they're not already transformed into a video file, I'll show you how to do that. Insta360, all you're gonna need to do is open up the Insta360 Studio and drag in one of these clips. And you can see that it instantly puts your video clip in here in 360. You can move around, click, zoom in all these different things and you can edit your footage in here. But if you wanna edit in Premiere Pro or After Effects, you can go ahead and render that out. So that's what I went ahead and did for all my contest footage. So if you have my contest footage, you don't need to do any of this. I already did this for you. The video files are already transformed. I'm gonna be going really quick on how to do this. If you wanna lock your direction, it's going to keep the same direction on the 360 footage the whole time through. I didn't go ahead and do that for the contest. That way you can keyframe a lot easier. And then I just use dynamic stitching, click calibrate, and then I pretty much just click this export button here, export it the highest quality possible to wherever you want. And that's all you need to do to really transform your footage into a video file. So once you go through and transform all your footage into that video file that I was talking about, you can go ahead and go over to the GoPro website. I'll have a link down below. It's the GoPro FX reframe tool. You can download it for Mac or Windows and it works in both After Effects and Premiere. So go ahead and download that, install it into Premiere or After Effects. And once you go ahead and do that, and let's go ahead and open up Premiere. Then you can drag your footage in. And as you can see, if you drag it in right off the bat, it's going to look like this. And that's obviously not what we want. It just looks like this is what like the two cameras look like stitched together. So then I'm gonna go to sequence settings and change the sequence to whatever you really want. Most of the time it's gonna be 16 by nine. So I'm gonna go 1920 by 1080, typical HD 16 by nine aspect ratio. And then I'm going to drag that footage back in and keep existing settings. That way it doesn't stretch it out to the video file. And all you need to do is go to the effects tab and type in reframe. And as long as you install the GoPro plugin correctly, you should be able to drag that on. I'm going to change the footage a little bit, go to the effects controls tab and then match it to whatever resolution you're working with. So Russ GoPro HD 16 by nine, 1920, 1080. And then you can see if you drag it around, you can kind of tweak it however you want, zoom out, zoom in. But this is going to be kind of laggy because it's a very, very high quality version of the footage. So what I like to do is right click on your footage, go to proxy, create proxy, and then I like to edit in the low resolution proxy. Basically, if you're not familiar with what a proxy is, it renders out your video clip in a really low resolution so it's easy to work on your computer and then you edit that version and then when you actually go to render out the project you bring back in that really high quality version of the footage and then you get that really high quality version of the footage rendered out but you don't have to put the strain on your computer while you're editing and then i just click next to original media in proxy folder so it's basically just going to make the proxy right next to the footage wherever you have it stored and then go ahead and click ok and it should open up Adobe Media Encoder. And once that opens up, it should automatically start rendering out. And if it doesn't, there should be a green arrow right up here where you just click go. And then you can see the progress bar down here just rendering out. And then once it's done, you'll see the screen check mark if it's successfully rendered out. Go ahead and close out of Media Encoder and then go back into your Premiere. And it's not actually gonna instantly turn the proxy on. So what you have to do is go down here to use this button editor and drag this toggle proxies down to the bar. If you don't already have it down there, I already do, so I'm not going to. And then click toggle proxies and you should see the footage kind of transform. You can see like the details and the shadows and stuff go away. And then I also just turn down the quality to one fourth while editing. That way it kind of just helps it be faster. And then you're pretty much ready to go ahead and keyframe the position, all these different things. I'm gonna be showing you that in just a second. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make a proxy in After Effects, just in case you're editing in After Effects so you can follow along as well. And then if you were in After Effects and you wanted to use that proxy, you could right click on the footage, 
and go to set proxy and then go to file and find out where you're at. So in here, here's the original footage and then the proxy folder was made right next to it. So then I'm just gonna click on the parking garage 360 proxy and import that. And then you can see the file went from 2.9 gigs to 161 megabytes. And then if you drag that footage in, you can see that you can toggle between the proxy by clicking this box up here in the project file. And then the same exact thing, you would just go ahead and type in reframe and drag the GoPro reframe on and then adjust it to whatever aspect ratio you're working with. And then you can pretty much do the exact same things in Premiere or After Effects. So whatever one you're more comfortable with, just go ahead and use that for whatever you're editing. The only thing I recommend in After Effects to do different is to turn on this enables motion blur layer and then go ahead and turn that onto your footage. And then when you go to do keyframes, it's going to have motion blur. But let's go ahead and go into Premiere Pro and do the majority of the keyframes. I feel like just more people use Premiere Pro. So we're gonna be doing that, but it's exactly the same options in After Effects. So just follow along as long as you have that motion blur enabled, it's going to look exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go through all of the different options it has here. And if you click this arrow, you can, you can see this little toggle wheel you have. If you feel like this helps you out, understanding what's happening a little bit more, you can go ahead and use that. I'm not going to. The pan moves left to right. The tilt moves up and down. The rotate rotates it like this. And then the curve of the lens kind of just makes it more of a ball or stretched out. I normally keep that pretty much the same throughout the whole thing, but it's all dependent on what you want. And then the zoom depends on how much you want to be zoomed in or out. Let's go ahead and zoom in and we can do a little keyframe sequence. So let's start it off where you can't even see him holding anything here. And then I just go through and keyframe all of the different settings. And let's go like a few frames forward or wherever you think you want to move. And let's zoom out. And we could rotate the camera a little bit. Kind of have it tilt down and then pan. And then you can see here, once we render that out, this is what the footage looks like. You can see we kind of keyframed it up to move like that. And then you can add more keyframes or whatever you really want to this footage. If you go to advanced controls, you can change the shutter angle. So the shutter angle is basically how much motion blur is gonna be applied to the footage. The 180 most of the time is the best and it's the most natural looking, but if you want more, you can drag it all the way up to 720 and it's gonna have a lot more blur. Or if you don't want any motion blur, but you can go down. And then again, let's go ahead and use some different footage. So I'm gonna create that proxy again go to the low resolution. It's gonna open it up in media encoder here. And then once it goes through, creates that proxy again, I'm gonna go ahead and open up that footage in Premiere Pro and then keep existing settings. And then let's go ahead and add that GoPro reframe tool on and make sure it's the 1080p. And then I'm gonna make sure that the proxies are enabled. And this technique I'm gonna be showing you here is kind of how to keep the subject in focus and kind of just track him throughout so to do that, let's go ahead and keyframe all of these different options here and set our subject wherever we want to start off at. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit wider here. If you go ahead and go to this button editor and add the safe margins option, and drag that in. And if you click that, you can kind of see what's more centered and it makes it a little easier to center your subject. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that looks good to me. And then let's go like 20 frames to the right. So I'm just gonna hold shift on my keyboard and click four times, one, two, three, four. That's just skipping five frames at a time. And then let's go ahead and center our subject again. And then again, 20 frames to the right, one, two, three, four. And let's center our subject again, one, two, three, four. Center him again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then for right now, I'm gonna just stop at however many frames I did, and we can render that out and see what it looks like. And then once you do that, you can see what that looks like. You can see that since I'm holding the camera in this footage, you can kind of see my leg, so we can crop in for that. And also a little bit of the stick that I was recording with. But before we do that, let's go ahead and highlight all of those keyframes and just click Bezier. It's gonna make it a little smoother of motion, and we can render that out and see what that looks like. Now that's a little smoother. And I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the zoom just to zoom in a bit. So at the end, let's have it just zoom in to 
maybe 50 or something so it zooms into him throughout but let's also go ahead and where he kind of flips off the camera this motion right here we can add a little bit of extra zoom to that just to emphasize that motion and this is something that you can do it's kind of a technique that a lot of people do just to emphasize emotion so what i went ahead and did is keyframed right at the start of where he kind of starts bringing his hands up and let's go right to where he finishes so right there and just zoom in a bit let's go ahead and render that out and see what that looks like and that's looking pretty cool honestly i think there's a lot of different stuff that you can do keyframing emotion just tracking to the subject tracking to different objects in your footage and then you can go through rotoscope out this stuff add different effects on and uh i think yeah that's pretty much just a few different techniques that i would use when editing 360 footage like I said, I just wanted to show you guys the basics on how to edit 360 footage, how to keyframe and all these different things. It's really just comes down to as creative as you want it to be. You can go ahead and play around with, you can see how if you zoom all the way out and zoom in, you can get some cool looks. Or if you change the lens curvature, you can get this sphere looking ball kind of match the fisheye. There's just so much you can do with all these keyframes. So just play around, make it your own, kind of see what you can do with the footage and how to make it unique and stand out compared to other people's. And that's why I really like 360 footage is because you can shoot it one way. Obviously for the contest, I shot it one specific way and there's gonna be so many different ways it's used and edited because just because of how many different keyframes and techniques that you can use while editing 360 footage. But yeah guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. If you wanted some 360 footage to practice on, you can go ahead and click the link in the description. It's my music video editing contest. There's some free footage to practice on as well as you can enter the contest. Follow me on all social medias. I'll have them linked down below. And if you wanted to support the channel, you can check out my website, briandelmata.com. There's some packs and presets. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one.